Okay? Newsletter 495. Nearing the end of this month, aren't we? 23rd of the 8th, 2009. Certainly been the year of identification, hasn't it? We're identifying all sorts of creatures, great and small. <laughs> hey? Recently we had a creature email us, threatening us if we don't do what he says, he's going to flood, the, flood our email box with his rod. And he did. But we know what the the good Lord says. The good Lord says, Blessed are you when you're persecuted. Second thing he says is, Turn the other cheek. And the third thing that our good Lord says is that the battle belongs to the Lord. Amen? Amen. Hey? Blessed are you when, when you are persecuted for doing the right thing. And we did the right thing by this, this person, this creature. I don't know whether it was a male or a female, but it was a creature, a created being. We put the truth in the letterbox and all hell broke loose. He rained, or she rained, or it rained filth down upon us. I was envisioning Lot in Sodom and Gomorrah, you know what I mean? And it just came flooding in like a mudslide. Amen? But JDCM is still standing. No apologies given to unrepentant sinners. No repentance um, needed on our behalf. I don't repent for speaking the truth to any man or woman. I'm not required to, and nor is any other saint. Can you say amen? amen? You're going to be savaged. That's the message. That the Spirit of God is saying to his holy remnant. Get ready. You're going to be savaged. The unrepentant sinners, whether they're in churches or out of churches, they're going to, sta- they're going to savage you. Right? So... We need to understand that. We, we, we need to realise that we're going to get blessed when we speak the truth. It come in, in a different form, of course, but turn the other cheek. That's what the Lord said. Turn, turn the other cheek. And the other one was that our mighty master said, forgive them. They know not what they do but if they're inside the church those people need to repent first and then you forgive them they can't be forgiven till they repent that's according to the letters of Paul the Apostle can you say Amen if my memory serves me well we'll go over to uh, Colossians now have a, have a, just have a peek in there, eh? Go over to Colossians. And uh, Colossians 3.13 Bearing with one another and forgiving one another if anyone has a complaint against another. This is inside the church. Even as Christ forgave you, so you also must forgive those brothers and sisters inside the church who have a complaint against you or, or offended you. How do we forgive them? Colossians 3.13, how? As Christ forgave us and how did Christ forgive you? I know, I don't know about you, but I had to repent. Hello? I had to repent first. Remembering this is inside the church, outside the church... Forgive them automatically for they know not what they do. If they knew what they were doing, if my persecutors and your persecutors, if they knew what they were doing, you know what they're doing? (laughs) 
they're coming against Jesus. <laughs> anyway, we go into the newsletter 495, titled, Then Only. Then Only. In, and I have, in italics here, it's a his, it's a Jesus terms. It's a Jesus terms thing. Not look, you ain't gonna get saved on your terms. <laughs> your family, listen to me. Your family and my family and relatives and in laws and outlaws, they're not gonna get saved on their terms. Or on their turf. We're going to get saved on his turf and his terms and his turf is paddocks green, can you say amen? That's where he'll lay you down. Paddocks green, not in Bindi Islands. Oh, well, the scriptures say this and the scriptures say that. Whosoever calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Yes. Whosoever calls upon the name of the Lord, I tell you what, you will enter into salvation. But to be saved to the uttermost, well, that's another walk, isn't it? And we had a look at that last week, didn't we, with the becoming like a child and being converted. He said that to his disciples. Can you say amen? Amen. Eh? Yeah, amen. <laughs> It's another story, it's not done and dusted in a prayer sitting in a chair or at an altar call, as they call them. Scripture used on our newsletter today, 2 Corinthians 6.17 Come out from among them. Be separate, be separate and be separated from them, says Yahweh, the Lord Jesus the Christ, do not touch what is unclean, and then only, paraphrased by Paul Sheehan here, then only will I receive you as my people, disciples, followers, church and saints. You're listening. What has to be done? What has to be done in order for Jesus to receive us, in order for God Almighty to receive us, that he'll be our God and we'll be his people and sons and daughters, what has to be done? What is the criteria here? We come out from among them. Among who? We don't hear this in the churches, do we? We don't hear that there's someone to come out from. We don't hear it. It's not preached. It sounds anti-social. It, it, it sounds anti-community. It sounds holier than thou. It sounds a little bit radical. Fanatical. Doesn't it? Yes, it does. It sounds a little bit too Jesus. I like to get Jesus, you know? Because then I see clearly who's who in the zoo on earth. Who is my real friend? And who is his real friend? Who is my real brother, my real sister, and my real mum. Are you listening? And my real children. <laughs> but as we had a look, and I have done a companion article, as we had a look at during the week about truth, and the companion article I have done, which is coming up, the false statement that all the people in the world are looking for the truth. Well, 
Oh, I don't really believe that. <laughs> if they really knew what the truth was. <laughs> Let me give you just a, just a little, a, a, a quick, a quick peek at what the truth really is. The truth really is Jesus. And you know what they've done to him, don't you? <laughs> you know what they've done to him. <laughs> and you know what they called him. They didn't call him lovey dummy. They didn't come to Jesus with chocolates and roses, minus the thorns. <laughs> hey? They come to Jesus with clubs. With, with vitriol. They, they come to Jesus with abuse. They come to Jesus with rejection and, and, and esteemed him not. They came to Jesus calling him the devil. They called him the wicked one. They said he was the father of the blowflies. Beelzebub. Hey? Eh? Come out from among them and be separate, says the Lord, do not touch what is unclean. We do not hear anything, do we, about coming out from where and who. But we know for sure, according to infallible scripture, there is a one world church, there is a harlot church. But we never hear on the glossy televangelists and televangelist S's, we never hear on their shows about this one world church beware, one world church harlot, whore church. Who is the leader of this church? Would he by any means be the king of the ecumenical world the Pope otherwise known as Dies Alta in Terra Lord God the Pope would it happen to be this man? would it happen to be the head of the Roman Catholic system? would it happen to be the Roman Imperial Rome, I should say, in drag, coming as in a new description, in a new gown called the Roman Catholic system, the Imperial Rome of old, maybe with a few more table manners, hey, a few more niceties to say. I believe it is. And I believe that the harlot church and the whore church and the filthy church, the prostituting church, has prostituting daughters. In other words, prostituting churches following the big mama the biggest church in the world, the big bitch herself. And where there's a big bitch, there's a big dog. <laughs> so who's the dog? Who's been a bad boy? Hey? Eh? <laughs> the man said to the dog, but he was the one that ripped the, the bill up, wasn't he? But he's been a bad boy, eh? Eventually the Harlot Church will blame the, the husband, the, the one world government, and then the one world government will turn and cobra the, the one world church in the neck, and the whole lot will just self-destruct as the, the beast takes over and Jesus sitting back on his throne having a good old look but he is seated he's not troubled in any way 
See, I don't serve a Jesus that one day will reign. <laughs> I don't serve a Jesus that one day will reign. I serve a Jesus that's been reigning forevermore. He's, he's reigning right now. <laughs> he's not reigning filth upon his holy remnant, filth by emails and threats. No, I, I, I'm not phased by threats of anyone. Bikey Christians or, you know, pretend bikey Christians. I'm not phased by threats of, 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 of immoral men or women or, or wayward governments. I'm not phased by humans. <laughs> I fear him who can take my body and soul and put it in eternal living hellfire. Can someone say amen? Amen. Then only. We must separate ourselves. We must not touch the unclean thing. You know the most unclean thing there is in the world? The most unclean thing there is in the world. False doctrine. Oh, she's a cracker that one. False doctrine. That's the Roman Catholic system. False doctrine. Harlot churches that follow on. Uh, uh, Pentecostal with the P double N Y. Evangelicals and 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 Episcopals and all the rest of them. Anglicans and and uniting churches all following this big bitch. And that word is, bitch is in the di- in the in the dictionary English dictionary. I have no guilt or conviction about using it. A dog is a dog and a bitch is a bitch. It's a female dog. Female dog, there's a male dog. That's the the one world government going into partnership. Signing legislation together. Getting along coming together under such pretenses and dusty dialogues. Dialogues that have been going on for years with blow the dust off every year and they go through the same old motions and then they open it up, oh, human rights, oh, peace talk, Indigenous situations, indigenous rights. Oh, abortion. Blow the dust off again for another year. Revival, revival's coming. You better believe it. Revival of evil. Rising up like never before. In such a bad and decrepit and degenerated way. How bad is that, Brother Sheehan? How bad is that? It's going to become... How bad is this this wicked revival going to become? It's going to be in the churches. That's how bad it's going to be. And they're going to recognise it as revival from a holy God, but their revival has nothing to do with holiness. That's not if you're spelling holiness with a H-O-L-I, any double S. <laughs> Maybe with a W, H. O L E. You listening? Yeah, 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 yeah. Just too dangerous, isn't it? It's just far too dangerous to start mentioning a one, mentioning a one world church. I mean, we've got enough on our plate. We just can't solve the world's problems, you know, unity and peace, indigenous rights, abortion and revival. How are we going to do it all? That's the problem. You aren't going to do anything, friend, because Jesus has already done it at the cross. And the sooner we realise that, the sooner we will have peace and indigenous rights and the abortion situation will be sorted and revival will be within the hearts of all those who would do that one thing that Jesus the Christ said, repent, hey, repent. Tell that that, that, um, black Beverly hillbilly Obama 
Tell him to tell the nation of America, repent. And don't just repent, truly repent. Don't just truly repent. That's no good for nothing unless we go then from true repentance to following the one true God. And that ain't Muhammad or Allah or, or, or Buddha or Bhagwan Rajni Shri. That ain't the Pope. Uh, who they say is Lord God the Pope on earth or Lord God the Pope, the ecumenical king. No, following the one true God, Yahweh, Jesus the Christ. 